Welcome back guys. We are covering a course called Network Security and Penetration Testing and for that we are covering a book called Guide to Computer Forensics and Investigations. And we are covering a chapter called Digital Forensics Analysis and Validation. So uh, we covered up to the point where we were discussing about how uh, the partitions are hidden and how can we retrieve the data from there. Now we are talking about uh, marking bad clusters. Now marking bad clusters is data hiding technique used in FAT file systems which was there and it was introduced by Norton and uh, uh, which is uh, nowadays semantic. It, um, in which the FAT file system replacing the sensitive or incriminating uh, data into a free or slack space on this partition or clusters involves the using the older utilities like Norton Disk Edit. Now what they were doing actually is that they were marking the good clusters of the data in the hard drive as the bad so that the windows consider it that it's a bad data and it won't read it or it would simply um, skip the data in that sector. Um, you can mark the good uh, clusters at best clusters in the file table um, uh, so the operating system considers them unusable. Only way that it can be accessed is that you can use a disk uh, which can change the uh, health of that cluster from a bad cluster to a, uh, to a good cluster. And uh, the tool that was used by Norton was Norton Disk Edit. Um, with the help of that, you can go into the DOS format and you can change the format of the um, or the, uh, the status of this cluster from bad cluster to a good cluster. Now, after that, we are talking about uh, uh, bit shifting. Uh, very common these days. Um, the people who have basic information about the assembly language, they can easily change the bits of the uh, data and by one bit you'll see that uh, one bit shifting you can see that the data becomes unreadable. So people are using these kind of techniques uh, with the help of which they are trying to encrypt the data uh, in their own possible way. Now that becomes very difficult for the guys um, who are investigating. Uh, they'll have to check that how much data has been shifted and uh, how can they make it readable. It depends on the person how good he was in uh, the assembly language and uh, how much data has been shifted uh, or how much bits has been shifted in order to scramble the data. Some users use a low level uh, encryption program that changes the order of the binary data, makes altered data unreadable. To a secure file, users run an assembler program also called a macro to scramble the bits of it. Then run another program to restore the scrambled bits back to its original position. Uh, so for them, they have created programs first to uh, shift the bits and then to reassemble it so that they can read the data. Bit shifting changes the data from a readable code of the data that looks like a binary executable file. Win hacks and hacks workshop include the features uh, where you can shift, um, uh, you can do the bit shifting as you can see over here that uh, this is the hex uh, code of the uh, text file which is on the text format. You can see the data which is appearing over here. Once they'll do a left shift by one bit using uh, the tool, you can see that the data has become unreadable over here. Now it really depends that what options you are choosing over there, how many bits you are shifting. Uh, it takes a lot of time in order to investigate that bit by bit and then you'll have to come up that if uh, you can uh, read the data after uh, knowing the exact pattern of it. Now we'll understand the stack analysis method is stack analysis. Now we'll understand stack analysis method. Uh, in that, uh, first of all, let's try to understand the steganography, which comes from a Greek word like hidden writing, hiding the messages in such a way that only the inten intended recipient knows the message what's written over there. Uh, it is one of the complex methods and even derived from the uh, from the understanding of the encryption how it used to take place long time ago. Now the term is for detecting and analyzing the steganography files. A digital watermarking is there which is hidden text appearing on the files which you cannot see but it's a text. If you even check the uh, size of the file it would be 100% 
equal but if you'll check the md5 uh, hash code of that that would be different that distinguishes between two files that which one has been altered there are lots of tools available over there uh, with the help of which you are changing the data or writing the hidden things on the on the files uh, many of them are freeware or shareware tools it inserts certain information into the variety of files and if you encrypt the plain text with the pgp to insert the encrypted text into a stochnography file uh, cracking the encrypted message is extremely difficult um, it takes a lot of time in order to understand uh, um, the actual message which is written on it. Now we'll try to understand different methods which are used in stag, um, stag analysis. First of all, we have stag only attack, and it's used when one file is containing the possible stagnography uh, content is available for analysis. It is similar to a uh, cyber text attack. This attack is one of the most difficult to perform because all you have to analyze is a suspect stagnography file. The second one is known cover attack. It's used to um, used when the cover media is used or the original file with no hidden message and the stego media. The converted uh, cover media that stores the hidden message are available for analysis. By analyzing the original stagnography files, further comparisons can be made to identify common patterns that might help in deciphering the text. Next is known message attack used when the hidden message is revealed later. Knowing the further analysis for the new message are similar to the known cover attack. The method is used for the comparative analysis for the deciphering the message. Because the message is known, deciphering takes less effort um, than the regular one. Then we have the last one called the, uh, the chosen message attack is used when the stagnography tool and the stego media were used to hide the message content because this method is, um, um, uses the known stagnography um, uh, tool and the analyst applies to the password and the passphrase recovery attack which is there. Now, chosen message attack is uh, when uh, we use to identify the corresponding patterns with the stego media. The technique creates a stego media and then analyzes them to determine how data is configured in a file. The analyst then uses these known configuration patterns to compare the suspected stego media to determine whether the message might be. Now we'll try to understand what happens in encryption to, an, uh, to decode an encrypted file. Users usually supply a password or a passphrase, which is usually kept secret with the person who has actually encrypted the file. Many encryption programs use technology called the key escrow designed to recover the encrypted data if the user forget the passphrase. Uh, so with the help of uh, uh, key escrow, they can at least uh, um, recover the data from it. If the user key is corrupted after a system failure or anything, they'll use this um, uh, passphrase and then they'll try to recover the actual file or the data which was there. Now the key sizes, since it's increasing with the passage of time, uh, key size from 128 bit to 4096 bits, it's making almost impossible for uh, the normal setup that we have for the investigative purposes in order to decrypt the hard drive and in order to find out that what data was actually stored on those computers. The higher is the bit size for the encryption, the more difficult it is in order to decrypt the things. Uh, you need quantum computing to process these kind of things, but um, it really depends what kind of case is there and how much money and effort and time you are spending on that um, in order to recover the data. Some encryption schemes, uh, schemes are so complex that it takes a lot of time in order to crack. It could be days, it could be weeks, it could be years, and even a decade uh, before you can get the data. But as I told you that it really depends that if it is worth waiting for that long uh, till you decrypt the data. Now if we talk about recovering passwords, uh, there are lots of tools available out there which are, the, uh, which are for commercial use as well as for personal use. Now the computing power and the algorithm and the, uh, the pattern or the recovery time that it takes depends from one software to another. Uh, some of the integrated into digital forensic tools, but some are standalone softwares available dedicated for those purposes, which has huge databases of the known passwords and hashes, um, which are used in order to recover the data. Standalone tools are last bit access data like uh, PRTK and uh, of crack and then uh, John the Ripper and Passware. Uh, these are just to list few, but uh, with the passage of time, every year, every month, there are new techniques and password cracking tools which are available out there. 
but it all depends how long is the password and how complex is the password brute force attacks use every possible letter number characters found on a keyboard method and then uh, the method can require a lot of time and processing power because it would be checking each and everything each and every password on the computer uppercase lowercase numbers alphabets special characters and stuff like that so uh, these kind of things are usually handled by gpus if you have uh, a list of known passwords there are huge files in gigabytes available on the internet that you can download and use them as part of the brute force where you can include those text files having all the list of uh, different passwords which are known um, and then they'll be checked on that thing now dictionary attack uses the common words which are found in the dictionary um, and it tries different passwords with a variety of languages like english french persian and even spanish etc and then they'll try to come up with the password of course it takes time with many different programs you can build profiles of the suspect to help determine his or her pa password many password protected operating systems and applications are storing the password in the form of md5 and hash now that's the most difficult thing to uh, to first convert it into hash and then save it if for example before the passwords if they were saved in the format of a clear text if security is compromised of an operating system the clear text password was visible but nowadays since uh, we know that lots of cracking and all those different tools are available out there um, a clear text password or an alphabetical password is first converted into an hash and then it's stored on the computer so if someone will try to even get the access to the files or the uh, dump of the hashes they'll have to first convert it into text in order to understand it on read it but of course it's a scramble and it becomes very difficult in order to uh, to decrypt it it's not impossible but it is possible it, it just takes more time a brute force attack requires converting a dictionary password from a plain text to a hash value and then it would convert it and would uh, try to guess the actual password there is a new technique out there which we call a rainbow table now another method um, uh, which is becoming very popular these days is a file containing the hash values of every possible password that can generate from a computer keyboard uh, because of the rainbow tables already containing these hash values with no conversion is necessary this method is much faster because you'll use um, you'll find the hash codes and directly compute it and check it on the on the file which is password protected to check if it is the right password and it is more powerful and more effective than a dictionary attack or a brute, fo uh, brute force attack. Now, the last one, the technique is called a salting password. And a salting password is alert, um, it even alters the hash values and makes the cracking even more difficult uh, because it is even converting the hash values. So, first you converted text to hash. And now salting is even converting the hash in something so that the users cannot uh, convert the password back to the text format. So that's it as far as this chapter is concerned. And this is the summary. And thank you very much.